Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing all of you how you can add an image over a video inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So here we can see I have a project open, there's a video clip in the timeline on Video Track 1, and we're going to want to add an image to Video Track 2 so that it's layered above Video Track 1 and can show over it. So the first thing I need to do is bring in a image, so you can add image files such as a PNG or a .jpg image to your video project in pretty much exactly the same way as your video files. So there's different ways to do that like drag and drop from Windows File Explorer or you can go to File, Import and then choose Media. So here we can select any image or video file from our computer and bring it in. So here I have a image file. I'm going to open that up and we should see it pop into the media pool. So we have this .jpg file here. Now the important bit for having an image over a video is that you bring it on a higher video track. So whatever's on video track 2 will show over video track 1, whatever's on video track 3 is going to show over 2 and 1 and so forth. So let's go ahead and drag this file from the media pool onto where video track 2 would be and you'll see as soon as I start hovering this drag and drop over video track 1, the video track 2 will be created automatically. Another way of doing it is simply to pull down this section here to make enough space for the video track 2. So that's left clicking and dragging on this line to move the uh, video and audio tracks. And I can right click above video track 1 and just do add track. So that'll create it in the same way. We can keep going if you need to, adding extra video tracks. So I can right click, do add track. You can also use middle mouse wheel up to scroll and just create space. I don't even think you need to technically put it in blank space. You can just kind of right click on one of the video tracks, hit add track, and another track will be created. Unless your video project's getting pretty complicated with a lot of video tracks, you may only need video track two. So don't worry about creating the other tracks. Let's go ahead and drag the image file in now. So I'm going to left click on the image file from video track two and drag it onto the timeline where I want it to be. So you'll see that when we let go, it's going to be a five second clip by default. So this image will be showing above the video track one for five seconds. So you can easily expand the duration of your image to match the video track by left clicking on one of the borders and then dragging it out to the right or the left and then expanding it until your image matches the same duration as your underlying video clip. You may want it to be shorter. You may not. It's totally up to you. Just as a quick FYI, if you see thumbnail previews for your images and you're wondering why you don't for me, it's because I have it in list view over here for the media pool. So rather than showing a preview of the image, it's just showing uh, metadata about the image. So I can easily switch that back to thumbnail with details or just pure thumbnail mode. And it's the same files, it's just it shows different information depending on which mode. Okay, so now that we have our image on video track 2 and our video clip on video track 1, we're probably going to need to edit some of the details about the video clip, such as its zoom and position, so that it meshes better with the background video clip. So up in the inspector, which is in the top right hand corner, we can control those properties like zoom and position by left clicking on the value such as zoom X and then dragging left to decrease it and drag it to the right to increase it. And we can just do that until we have it at the proper point. So we can also take position X and drag this over to a corner and then position Y and decrease this in order to lower it or raise it by dragging to the right in order for the image to move upwards on the screen. And we can just position that wherever we want it to be. So if we go to the start and hit play now, we can see our image is sitting there above the background. We may decide though that it's kind of boring if the image is just sitting there. So we could easily add a little bit of keyframe animation to this. So if you want to do that, we can choose a frame where we do want this image to be in its current location and then add a keyframe to the properties which we've already adjusted. So I have it here in the timeline. Now in the top right, we can see these keyframing diamonds next to the properties which we've adjusted. So if we click on the keyframe diamonds, that sets a keyframe point, which means this is going to be the end point for the animation. If we set a starting point, then Resolve is automatically going to go between those values, creating a animation in the property. So if I go to frame zero now and I take the zoom and we shrink it down to zero, that means it's going to be totally invisible here. You can see that when I double click it and I type in zero, that a new keyframe diamond is created here, which means now that there's two points for it to animate the value between. So if I hit space on the keyboard, we can see that the image now basically grows in size until it's at the full size we want for 
our video clip. We could easily animate the movement as well. So I'm going to take this X position and I'm going to change it at frame zero. So all the way to the left where this image just appears on the screen. And I'll just take this X position and I'll double click it and type in negative 900. So that means it's going to start way off the screen and then it's going to animate its value until it gets back to that negative 450 or so. And the end result of that is that it looks like it's growing from the left rather than growing from this middle point right over here. So if I play that back again, we can see how this affects the animation. And you can just watch the values animating or changing their value across time between those keyframe points. So if you'd like a slightly more complicated way of putting an image above your base video clip or possibly multiple images lined up in a grid, then we can use an effect you can find in the effects library in order to do that. So if we go to effects library, open effects, and then we scroll down here pretty close to the bottom, we can find an effect called video collage. So hovering over this, you can see that video collage can put different sections in your video tiles in a grid in order for you to have an image display over. Now, this can be a single tile. It can be two by two, three by three, however many images you want. The trick to doing it is that you have the same settings on each image. So let's go ahead and start by just having one image showing above our base video clip. So I'm gonna drag this video collage onto the image clip back up here. You can see that I've actually reset everything about this image back to its defaults. So we're just working with the image clip, no animation, no changes here. So when we do that, we can see it basically just shows a bunch of the background video clip. So we have to change some settings about that effect. So left click on your image, go to effects. And now under video collage workflow, I'm going to go from create background to create tile. And now what you're going to see is that it takes the clip that's under here and it positions it as one of the tiles in a grid. So in the preview, we could kind of see it created four slots for the image to show above. This could be just fine as it is. You don't actually have to fill all of the tiles. So what we could do is just take the vertical offset and just lower this down, take the horizontal offset, position that as well, and just get this to show basically wherever you want. And now by default, it's going to try to fill in the sides for this image tile with this yellow color. You may not want that at all. So we can go over to the tiles tab. Then we can go down to tile styling, take the tile opacity and shrink this to zero. And then that's going to get rid of this tile background. The only thing you'll be able to see is the image clip in its original ratio, which may be exactly what you want. You may not want that yellow background. So now all we really need to do is position this where we need it to be. So under globals, we can go ahead and adjust the horizontal offset once again, just getting it where we want it to be. And of course, these are keyframeable properties. So if you need it to slide out from the side, we can just keyframe it at one point where we want it to end up, go to frame zero, and then move it way off screen like so, hit play. And then we're going to have a slide animation as it pops out over here. If you want to adjust the zoom, you can do that under tiles and then resize content. You have zoom right here as a property you can animate in order to increase or decrease the size. So obviously it can get more complicated with this video collage effect. And that's why I'm showing it second. But using this tool is a lot more flexible, especially if you want to have a bunch of tiles for different images showing at the same time and following the same set of rules. So back under globals, I'm going to reset the horizontal offset and the vertical offset, which means these tiles are just going to be in their default position. So we have slot one, slot two, slot three, and slot four. So if we want to bring in extra images, we just need to put them on video tracks, three, four, five, six, so on, as many as we need for these tiles. So I'm just going to... So I'm just going to drag in another copy of this Petra image .jpg, put it in here. I'm going to pull it all the way over here. So I'm just going to duplicate this clip a few times. I'm going to select it, hit control C. I'm going to go over here to the end here and then hit control V to paste it in. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see just two copies of the same thing. Okay, so now that I have another copy of that image in our timeline, we actually want to copy the effect over to the new image. So to do that, I'm going to select this clip down here, hit control C to copy, and then I'm going to left click on the top image and we're going to do paste attributes. So you do that with Alt V on your keyboard. And then inside of here, we're going to be copying video attributes, namely uh, plugins. So if we check plugins over here, hit apply, then on this image clip, you should see effects pop up in the bottom left hand corner. Now we can go to the effects tab and the inspector. 
and you'll see the same settings we had for that bottom image, the one in video track two, also in video track three. And now the only thing we need to do in order to move this tile over to the second slot is to go to the tiles tab. And then where it says active tile, we change this to tile two. So because we did it this way, copying the plugin settings from one image to another, they're going to work in the same way. They're just going to occupy different slots. And that's betch and that's going to be much easier than setting everything up custom for every tile you need to create. Rather, you can just duplicate the settings. So to demonstrate that a couple more times, I'm going to drag in an image from my media pool onto video track four. Then I'm going to expand the video track four clip until it matches the duration of the other video clips. And then I'm going to left click on then I'm going to left click on the border of the image four. And I'm going to pull this all the way over to the right side. Now I need to copy the attributes from the other image clips into that new one. So I'm going to select one of them, hit control C to copy, left click on the new image, hit alt V to paste attributes, and just make sure that plugins is checked, hit apply, you should see it shrink into one of the tile positions. Now in the inspector, go over to effects. And then under the tiles tab, we just change this active tile to tile three. And we can do that one final time. So I'll right click to add a new track for the video by right clicking on video check four. So we get video check five to pop up here. Let's drag an image in to the timeline. I'm going to expand it to match the other image clips. I'm going to control C to copy one of these tile clips. And now I'm going to left click the new image, hit Alt V. And, and for right now, we only need to paste in this plugins, copying the plugin. So it's going to shrink. Now we go over to effects tab. And under video collage, we are going to go to the tiles tab and just make it the tile four. So obviously, I use the same image four times here, but you would just use a different image each time from your media pool if you need it to create two, three or four different tiles. So using the video collage effect is another way you can kind of streamline the positioning of your different images as they layer above your underlying video clip. And just so you know, you can also use the video collage effect with individual videos. So if you wanted to have four videos playing on top of the background video, you could do that as well. Images work fine, as you can see as well. So that's pretty much going to be how you can get images to show up over video inside of DaVinci Resolve. I hope this video helped all of you out there. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I'll see all of you in my future video content.